I know how a lot of us are feeling right now. And I've been trying to find the right words to say it for months now. I've sat down multiple times to try and make this video, and each time getting scrapped. I want to talk about Sea of Thieves as an IP in its future. I've done a lot of speculation videos in the past about what could or needs to be coming, but I mean this to be a little more abstract. This video essay represents the pinnacle of my thoughts about the direction of our beloved pirate fantasy, and it'll be the final video I do for the foreseeable future about this topic. Back in 2018, what attracted me to Sea of Thieves was the magic of its open world. The idea of setting sail on the seas and exploring a fantastical world packed with hidden secrets. But five years on, that feeling is dwindling more than ever, and the piratical flame inside me is at risk of going out. I'm not trying to say Sea of Thieves is dying, of course it's not, but it's certainly forgotten by many. There's the dedicated player base, but just stop and think for a second about how this game's update cadence functions, and please compare this to other games. Huge titles that you love. Rare deliver a season, and there's lots of hype. Mid-season, the game slows, until the next, and the cycle repeats. In my opinion, this is not how a game should function. The updates should support the main game. We shouldn't be coming back to the game just for the updates. Monthly updates, in a way, achieved this. The question should be raised. Was the switch to seasons an artistic or resources-based decision? Regardless, there's an underlying inevitable problem, however, that isn't being solved. All related to ambition. And that's we always speculate within a scope. We rarely speculate on big things, because there always seems to be this cap on what scale we think, and this could be true, what scale Rare will actually go to when they add new content. We still see Sea of Thieves as a small gem of a game with a small studio behind it, which in reality, it's not, and this stigma should be broken. Everyone needs to start seeing this as a huge title with great potential. I understand that there could genuinely be a resources issue at Rare, and the inevitable truth could be that the game will continue on a trajectory like what it's on, with updates to enhance the sandbox and just adding more things to do, but I, as someone that absolutely adores the game, I want to think big, and I want it to achieve its true potential. Over the past couple months, I've been speaking with many people about this, and I personally believe the biggest thing Sea of Thieves needs to save it from a dark future is a form of a relaunch that does three primary things if it is to survive. One, throw the boundaries of the content we know out of the window. Two, reignite press interest to the game, ensuring a media storm. Three, kick off a whole new level of live service, which perhaps could include making Sea of Thieves free to play. A wild one, but it's worth exploring. Perhaps a wider array of Emporium items could support this? It also goes without saying that the game would benefit from Unreal Engine 5. I know the technical work involved with upgrading it is immense. I'm not saying it wouldn't take time, I'm just saying Sea of Thieves would benefit from it. To show the solution in an ideal world, I want to bring back up from what I'm now on coining Skull Island concept. Skull Island all starts with this right here. A clip from an unreleased cinematic that was originally going to debut Sea of Thieves. Skull Island is a brand new island that's the size of a whole region, with a, no, a volcano at its centre. You traverse the island through a network of rivers, waterfalls, lagoons and lakes. This island is packed with secrets, mysteries and points of interaction outside of voyages. For those of you who have played it, think how Hogwarts Legacy does their world. You could come across a dark and mysterious cave, only to get trapped in there by a boulder that crashes down at the entrance, only to realise that this whole cave is the entrance to a treasure vault left by the ancients long ago. Skull Island also introduces side quests, another concept I've done a whole video on. These are in the style of how Elden Ring does theirs. This concept aims to turn Sea of Thieves slightly more story-based for context. Your decision in one questline could completely change your experience in another without you realising, and there wouldn't be clear-cut start points for these side quests. 
Some would be simple and some tall tale like with cinematics like the curse scenes from season 8. This update doesn't need a campaign because of what Rare could achieve with the side quest mechanic. The outpost on Skull Island would be completely unique compared to anything we've seen before as well. Buried in the jungle would be civilization in the style of Tiki. Hopefully you understand the vision I'm talking about here. I want to feel the excitement to explore again. I want there to be secret side quests, be rewarded for my exploration and to not feel that there are X amount of set interaction points, that there's always something new. This is only half of the solution though. This is a huge update, sure, but it doesn't completely heal the wound of players only returning for the update. How would the game continue as a live service in this relaunch? The model would be simple. Seasons are far more ambitious than normal, even if they have to be a few months longer. And they complement the story. There's a ton of world building and character evolution, and even if temporary, on a drastic scale. Adventures need to be more tall tale-like, and the arcs need to be longer. It's imperative that the story doesn't feel disjointed and that everything is connected. Live events would be implemented and occur whenever a big story moment is happening. For example, the return of Flameheart would happen live in-game at a certain one-off date and time. These two parts to the relaunch of Sea of Thieves would change how we currently perceive things and allow for an old game to transform into a new one. Because of the scope of what we know, we'd all say this will never happen. But I believe that something like this needs to happen. I'm not asking for Skull Island concept to happen, I do understand that it is incredibly ambitious and it's borderline a new single player title, but I'm simply showing how an update like this could affect Sea of Thieves. So, the million dollar question. What Season 10 will be at the moment is completely unclear. On one hand, we've got loads of evidence, old and new, to suggest a huge Tall Tale expansion with the Peter Pan and Pirates of the Caribbean universes. Aside from the existing evidence, which loads of crazes have talked about, in fact, Captain Falcon released some tweets highlighting even more of the mountainous parallels with Peter Pan, the developers have been tweeting mysterious things and teasing the ideas of these universes. Season 9 perfectly improved the sandbox to align with a possible biggest update the game's ever got. Adventures have been put on hold, a new mystery is about to start, could it keep us tied over with until Season 10? We've yet to see the impact of the return of the Damned Adventure, and there are so many questions we have. So many unfinished arcs. The Flameheart War, Ancient's Arc, Tasha's Story, The Dark Brethren's latest plan, which all do link together loosely, however everything is yet to come together. On one hand, we have that. On the other hand, a big part of me questions whether Rare will pull something off, which will hit the three pillars I've talked about. Throwing the boundaries of the content we know out of the window, reigniting press interest to the game ensuring a media storm, and kicking off a new level of live service. Some of you may think that the path the game is on currently is fine, and it certainly is, it's amazing. But I can't help but think big. As I've mentioned, I love this game more than any other, and I'll stick with it for as long as it lives. For the rest of the year, if they continue how they have been, that wouldn't be an issue. The seasonal hype cycle would continue, and everyone would continue to play and love the game. But I, and this video, really aims to look at the future in wider context. Not just the next year, but how this game will continue as an IP. It's so tough to predict the future because we've never had stable update cadence long term. We don't really know what Rare can achieve if their assets aren't devoted to a secret update. Or do we? We don't know what Season 10 will bring, and so I can't be sure about the future of the game. If Season 10 and 2023 are not big, and we continue with the scale of the updates we've been getting, I can't see Sea of Thieves ever reaching the height of titles like Overwatch, Fortnite, Elden Ring, Hogwarts Legacy, and all the rest of the biggest hitters. However, if Season 10 does hit the mark, we will enter a new Gilded Age of Piracy, and the game's only direction for the future will be up. 
endless possibilities of new horizons, stories, and memories. I hope for the absolute best for Sea of Thieves, but ultimately the decisions for the future have already been made and we'll have to wait to find out the outcome at the Xbox Game Showcase 2023 on the 11th of June. Let me know what you think of all this down in the comments below. What do you want to see come to the game and what do you want to see from Season 10? I want to thank you all for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.